So guys, this is episode three of the throwback cases I'm doing. So if you don't know what a throwback case is, it's where I'm going to look at crimes that have happened in the past. The first one I've done is on Chris Donald. And the second one that I did last weekend was about Anthony Walker from Liverpool. I'll put the link in the descriptions below so you can check those videos out and let me know what you think. But this week, I'm going to be looking at Sabah Khan, who was involved in the 2016 brutal murder of her own sister, at Saima Khan, which grabbed the headlines in Luton. An investigation into this crime revealed a plot riddled with jealousy and underlying anger stemming from an illicit affair. We're going to have a deeper, closer look at what actually happened. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. And let's get into this now. Saima Khan, may she rest in peace, came from a family whose three generations lived in Bedfordshire in the UK. And they followed a traditional Asian tradition of caring for and supporting each other whilst living in the same home. Saima was married, her husband Hafiz Rehman was a taxi driver and Saima was a care worker. The couple had four children together. Also in the family was Saima's sister Saba. However, unknown to Saima, her sister and her husband were having an affair for almost four years. According to detectives, Saba had become infatuated with Hafiz. The infatuation had slowly turned into a toxic obsession to the point where Saba could not come to terms with the fact that she had to share Hafiz with someone else. Over time, Saba and Hafiz often engaged in sexual intercourse and Saba became pregnant once. To keep the affair hidden from their family, Saba had to abort the child in 2012. According to Hafiz's barrister later, he inquired if he could actually marry the two sisters, but his religion forbid it. The affair continued. Owing to the affair, tensions between the two Khan sisters also escalated, and Saba reportedly moved out and started living separately from her family. In 2016, apparently Hafiz's affections started inclining more towards his wife. According to reports, Saba's jealousy grew and she started looking up methods online to commit murder and get away with it. On May the 23rd, 2016, Saba was babysitting her sister's children. The rest of the family and Hafiz were attending a funeral at a local mosque. And later that night, Saba lured Saima home by informing her through text messages that her youngest child was crying for her mother. There was CCTV footage from a neighbour which showed Saima entering the family home a little later than 11pm. She turned the hallway lights on, which were turned off some 45 seconds later, and the following eight minutes was where Saba had attacked Saima with a knife she had purchased from a supermarket. She stabbed Saima repeatedly, apparently almost decapitating her. Reports state that she continued to stab her sister even after she was dead. Reports show that Saima had been stabbed 68 times. One of the blows had pierced Saima's neck while severing several arteries and the jugular vein. And it has also been stated that her screams could be heard by the neighbours on Overston Road in Luton. That's how horrific it was. So the court heard how, in the midst of the attack, Saima's eldest daughter had called out to ask Saba whether she was killing their mum. In response, Saba shouted to them to stay upstairs. She then smashed the window and concealed the recently purchased murder weapon and the black, blood-stained clothing she had worn to carry out the killing in bin liners before calling her parents and emergency services, claiming her sister had been the victim of burglary gone wrong. And guys, I've got actual footage of when the police approached her a little after she had murdered her sister. Check this out. <laughs> so who was at home with her, do you know? I was at home. She was just I you came two? Home. Yeah, okay. I mean, I came home, but she went to work. I yeah. was with the kids, the girl was asleep. When I put her to sleep, I went to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. When I came back, I didn't come back out. I heard, I, I, I kept on texting her, I was like, where are you? Because the girl was crying. I heard the girl crying. I mm -hmm. go to the girl is crying, where are you? I thought she needed milk. Mm -hmm. So I rang her and texted her, I go to her, the girl's crying. She got to me, she's here. When she came here, I shout from the bathroom, I go to her, are you home? She goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I was fine. But then I heard her shouting suddenly, and when I heard her shouting, I just came out. When I came out, she it was, was just her shouting, you didn't hear anybody else? I didn't hear anybody okay. else. But I heard banging. When I heard banging, when I came down, I saw How her How long like ago that. was that, roughly? Maybe about half an hour ago. Half an hour ago, okay. Were you aware of anyone else in the house? I don't think so, no. no. Okay. Apart from when she came in, I didn't hear anything else before okay. that. Okay, okay. And then when she came... So, so she your, your belief is that it was just yourself, her and the children? Me, her and the children. Where were the children now? They're still inside, They're still inside yeah. yeah. The, girls, the girls were awake, so that's why I was saying I wanted to go inside with the girls. Okay. 
I don't know, when I came down, I rang my dad. Firstly, I just hugged her. I just, I thought I like, when I saw the wounds, I like, I thought I'm mm. going to put pressure to her. So she, was the front door open? No, it was closed. It was closed. Front door okay. was closed. Was Did you blood. see anything lying down or anything? Any weapon or anything? Like no, that? it was just blood literally. I walked in it. Yeah. So I literally just ran over it. I took a scarf to cover it because I thought I was gonna. Yeah. You know, you know when you cover the wound and like stop from bleeding. And I thought. What if have you I done to your hands? Your hands bleed. She had glass, so I took the oh, glass okay. out and it was glass everywhere. So I was okay. just hugging it to me, and then I don't know. Then I rang my dad. When I rang my dad, and then he was like, "What's happened?" I said, "I don't know what happened." And I rang the ambulance, and then. So soon after that, okay. investigating officers soon figured out that Saba was deceiving others with the lie of a robbery gone wrong when they found the murder weapon in her room and thereafter arrested her. And she pleaded guilty to the murder of her sister at the Old Bailey in London. So at her sentencing, it had emerged that she had grown increasingly desperate after an affair with Simon's husband, which had begun years earlier, turned sour to the point where they arranged to be rehoused away from the family home. In WhatsApp messages between Sabah and Rayman read out in court, the defendant described her sister as a bitch and accused Rayman of marrying her for the sole purpose of attaining the passport. The relationship, it emerged, appeared toxic, with Rayman using his phone's blocking feature to stop Sabah from sending him messages. Jane Bickerstaff, the QC for the CPS, told the court how the affair between Sabah and Rayman had been kept as a secret from Simon although he had made inquiries, as I said, whether Islamic law allowed him to marry both sisters. In Rayman's statement to police, he accused Sabah of instigating the affair and said that although he wanted to break it off, Sabah threatened to harm herself if he did so. In one message from Sabah to Rayman, it said, Nothing in the world can change my feelings for you, not even you. No matter how you would treat me, it won't change a thing. Day by day, my love gets stronger. As of three months before killing Simon, Saba began researching methods of committing murder on the internet, including searches for where to buy poisonous snakes and viewing a page entitled 16 Steps to Kill Someone and Not Get Caught. Excuse at the time said, there were a number of searches that go on the look at different types of ways to kill someone, and messages retrieved during the police investigation revealed that from at least 2016, Saba was in touch with a man in Pakistan who delved in black magic and who she paid £5,000 to cast a spell that would kill Saima. Although the messages were sent in third person, it was established that Sabah sent them. The messages said, You finish off Saima as quickly as possible, so my Saba can get her her fees back. How cold and calculated is that, guys? She actually sent that message in third person and paid five grand to somebody to do black magic. I don't know whether that shit exists or not, but absolute madness what must have gone through her head. The killing. Saima had been working as a carer for an elderly woman while Saba looked after their children while Rahman and the sister's parents with whom they lived went to a funeral. And taking advantage of their absence, Saba sent four text messages to her sister saying her youngest daughter, who had just turned one years old, was crying and needed a mother. As I said, the CCTV showed her entering just after 11pm. The hallway lights were turned on and 45 seconds later they were turned off and the hallway remained in darkness for just over 8 minutes the period in which she was murdered. The prosecution said at 11.25pm, Saba rang her parents having already changed clothes and concealed the murder weapon. So in mitigation, her QC, Joe Sidhu, said claims that Saba had been driving force behind the affair were untrue. He said that despite Rahman's claim to have ended the relationship, he remained in sexual contact until days before Saba's murder. He said that despite Rahman's claims to have tried to end the relationship, he was still having sex with her days before Saba murdered her sister and Rahman had warned off another suitor who had developed in a relationship with her. Back in 2012, Saba had a termination after she became pregnant by Rahman during the sexual encounters. So once again, I just want to say rest in peace, Saima Khan, and my condolences go out to your family. So where are Saba Khan and Hafiz Rahman now? So remembering his wife, Hafiz said she was a loving mother to four beautiful children, a devoted wife, a beautiful daughter and the most caring of sisters. He continued to tell the people that Simon's murder had shattered the family. He said this was a junction in our lives where we intended to watch our children grow, to love and to spend quality time as a family and make memories. In a statement read out in court by Rahman, he said that he was ashamed for committing adultery and stated that not a day goes by where he didn't regret doing what he did. He added the ones who are suffering the most are my children and they have lost the most important woman in their life, their mother.
so Saba was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 22 years. She's incarcerated in Bedfordshire in the UK. An appeal was filed by a legal counsel, however the judges dismissed it because they did not find that the minimum term imposed by the sentencing judge was excessive. As for Hafiz Rahman, his current whereabouts are unknown. So guys, this was a brutal act of jealousy. It wasn't a case of an honour killing, nor was this a burglary that Saba Khan had attended to create. Saba wanted her sister's life. She wanted her children and her husband. And hearing the news that they were planning to leave the family home together was the final straw and she took her sister's life in a bitter envy. Now I do want to mention a few things which are quite relevant to this story. And I just thought, let me put my opinions across and then I'd like to hear from you guys what you guys think and you can leave in the comments below. So the first thing is this. Now in this kind of situation, you're with someone and you start messing about or doing whatever you've got to do with another person and they know that you're married or they know that you've got a partner and they're happy with it. Over time, what happens is that number two wants to become number one. Even though at the time that person is saying, I'm absolutely fine with that. I know you got a missus. I know you got a partner. I know you got a family, but I want to do what I want to do with you. That person will always want to become number one because that's where the emotion comes in. More time you spend with someone, you get intimate with that person, person catches feelings. That gives them the false hope that they will be the number one. That happens, trust me, I've seen it many a time where people are happy, comfortable with what they're doing. And once the feelings kick in, that's it. All hell breaks loose. So I just want to put a bit of a different angle on here. So you've got Hafiz and he's married to Saba's sister. He's got children with Saima, yet he's sleeping with his sister-in-law. Now, I know it was stated in court that he actually tried to call this relationship off with Saba Khan a number of times, but he felt as though that Saba Khan was going to harm herself. However, just a couple of days even before, the actual murder, he was still sleeping with Saba. So what was Hafiz trying to say? Oh, Saba's going to harm herself, therefore I'm going to have sex with her. It's an excuse. In these kind of situations, it takes two to tangle and Saba Khan caught feelings. Now, not in any way, shape or form am I condoning what Saba Khan did because she did something brutal, something horrific, which is inexcusable. It seems though that Saba Khan caught deep feelings with Hafiz now you got to think about it, when Hafiz used to receive messages from his own wife or lovey-dovey messages, Saba Khan used to get angry. It used to infuriate Saba Khan where she used to take Hafiz's phone and say, why are you texting your wife like that? That's his wife, her sister, and she's getting pissed off because his wife is texting him lovey-dovey messages. So for her to be even able to take the phone away from Hafiz shows that she had some type of authority, or some type of status where she could have access to his phone. And for Saba Khan, it got to a stage where she used to message him saying, even though you don't want me, even though you don't need me, I still love you and I'll do anything to have you. Which means that she was infatuated by him. She was, she wanted him, probably knew nothing else. And guys, you got to think about it. If you have a look culturally or traditionally in Asian families, they're very close knit and you very rarely see women out in the open dating any men. It's a big no-no. I don't know about these days because... Obviously, times have changed, but back when we're talking about this happened, what, five, ten years ago, a bit different. Could be, and this is just my opinion, it could be that maybe Hafiz gave Saba Khan attention, which she'd probably never had, and she felt that this is normal, when in actual fact it wasn't. He was married to her sister, and she took his attention to another level. And he may have seen that how she was feeling about him, he jumped on the opportunity and decided to do what he do, which was basically to have sex with her and... He didn't even use a condom because she actually got pregnant and she had to terminate that pregnancy as well. Now what I want to say or my point is that ever do get into a situation like this where you've got your own family, you've got your own setup, but you've got your thing on the side. Think about what could potentially happen. And I don't mean murders because that's extreme. What I'm talking about is the feelings of the other person because the more time you spend with someone, the more you get to know someone. When you get intimate with someone, things change. And you yourself on one hand can walk away. But then you got to think, what could be going through that other person's head? One minute you love lovey-dovey with them, next minute you're not there in their life. All sorts of emotions could be running through their head. And it seems though that Saba Khan went all out to try and get her man, who wasn't even hers. And she took her own sister's life. But guys, let me know what you think with regards to the situation. It's your boy JC. Keep it locked, keep it real.